Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, Art and I are with our old pal, Manny Pacheco, Hollywood historian. Great to see and you, I, Manny. And I am your old pal, old pal. <laughs> well, I, I would prefer to refer uh, to one another as uh, pals of long standing. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, I have I'm a question. Go ahead. Manny. Yeah, go ahead. Go, go ahead. I'm just I'm saying I'm happy to see you guys. That's all. Go right yeah, ahead. Same. So um, you are a font of information, and I was watching, uh, and it's going to sound somewhat unrelated, I was watching uh, uh, one of the Frankenstein films, and I was thinking there are dozens and dozens, of, well, maybe not dozens, but there were several Frankensteins, and Boris Karloff came to my mind that, well, he was the definitive Boris Karloff. But in Dracula, there were a lot of Dracula films as well, and uh, I want to go search out one of the Dracula, but who, in your mind, was one of the the best or among the best Draculas? Do you, well, is well, that something that you could uh, help us with? Well, before I begin with that, I, I don't think you meant I was a font of information. I think you mean a fountain of information. <laughs> I don't know what a font of information is, but I'll, I'll take it. But I mean, I yeah. think you meant fountain. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, okay, okay. So I will check that. Well, I will check that afterwards, and I'll call you later. Yeah, <laughs> you know about these about these best of you know like the best Sherlock Holmes, which obviously was Basil Rathbone. But people of a certain age, you know, more more modern people will argue maybe Robert Downey Jr. And I'm thinking, no, oh, come on, really. But you know, I guess I'm I'm of a certain age that remembers the classic, uh, great, the greatest of, and in. The, in the case of Dracula, I mean, has there any has there been anyone better than Bela Lugosi, the man who, when he was buried, died with his cape? <laughs> I, I can't I can't think of anybody uh, doing. It isn't uh, it's my opinion that Bela Lugosi was not only the best, but he's the guy that everybody else tried to imitate. Well, yeah. that's because of the creation of uh, of the makeup that was done on him. Of course, that has a lot to do with that. So, yeah, on Halloween, you'll see the kids dress up like Bella Lugosi's yeah. uh, Dracula. But, you know, that said, I did some research and I discovered there's some pretty darn good Draculas or at least darn good vampire-ish, Dracula-ish vampires. Yeah. Uh, and it has to begin with the silent movie, uh, the, the Nosferatu, which, oh, yeah. which was famous. really... Yeah, and that was really a Dracula type because it was actually written by the guy who wrote Dracula, the original. So, I mean, Max Schreck, you know, he was very, very good at playing that really ugly, really yeah. monstrous vampire. He, but there was no sex appeal at all. Where the sex appeal came was in the Universal Draculas, where you could actually take a leading man like Bela Lugosi, put him on stage first, because he was a stage actor who portrayed Dracula. He didn't do it in the movies first. He did it on stage. Oh, really? But when Universal bought the rights for it, they were just absolutely wanting uh, Boris Karloff, but he committed to Frankenstein, and that was going to come out, what, six months later. So they turned to the stage actor in Boris, uh, in uh, Bela Lugosi. And uh, Bela Lugosi, I mean, for me, is definitive. But, you know, he only played Dracula twice. That was really? it. Absolutely. Only wow. the original Dracula and in the movie Abbott and Costello meets Dracula. That's now, only am, time. Yeah. Manny, am mm -hmm. I correct that Bela Lugosi, even though he only played Dracula twice, really was defined by that character for the rest of his career, had trouble getting away from it? Right. Oh, yeah. He would play mad professors or, uh, you know, bat bitten scientists, that kind of <laughs> stuff, which were very similar to the idea of Dracula. But, you know, at the time that Dracula came out in 1931, believe it or not, what was considered the more popular Dracula at that moment was the Mexican version of Dracula in 1931. Really? Played by? Basically, it was being made at the same time that the original Dracula was, except for Mexican actors. They would film the Dracula during the day, and then at night they would they would film the Mexican Dracula, and the and the Dracula was played by a man named Carlos Villarreal. In the and, same studio. Yes, Universal put same out a crew. Yes, yes, exactly. Wow. And and everybody thought when they were doing the film, they were watching the rushes. You know how you watch rushes that the Mexican version was more of the definitive Dracula. 
Wow, I'd love to see that. Yeah, I mean, Carlos that's, Villarreal. Yeah, Carlos Villarreal. I'm almost positive. Let me just double check. His name is, oh, I'm sorry, Carlos Villarreal. Carlos Villarreal. Oh. Carlos Villarreal. So I want to make sure I get that name right. So there you go. Now that I got that. But yeah, it's it's a Spanish speaking Dracula. How about that? Sure. So wow. how 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 did the go Bela Lugosi get defined then as the sort of archetypal? Because they were never going to put Carlos Villarreal in an English speaking. No, 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 no. But I mean, of all the other people who played Dracula one over the years, other, yeah. How did, well, how there did, were, he gets defined as being uh, sort of what we think of. I know. But then all of a sudden they put out a, a movie called Son of Dracula. Well, you know, Bella can't, can't play his son. So right. who do they bring in by that point? They bring in Lon Chaney to play oh. Son of Dracula. And yeah. they instead of calling him Dracula, they call him Count Alucard, which is Dracula spelled backwards. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'll, I'll uh, Manek. I have to tell you, one of my favorite uh, portrayals of of Dracula, one I think was much scarier in in many ways, was by Gary Oldman, and I can't remember the name of the film, but Gary Oldman played um, more of a historical Count Dracula, the guy he, who literally chopped off heads and drank blood. Yeah, he was uh, like Vlad the Impaler. Yeah, you know, he yeah. was. Um, he was a, a scary Dracula, but there was a lot more Draculas between them, though. I, 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 was he in an interview with the vampire with, with Tom Cruise? Was that was that the one? Um, no, it wasn't. But but that. You but there was a Dracula. Point. Yeah, there, there was a Dracula. I, after after Lon Chaney Jr. played Dracula, they they did this series of films where they they put Frankenstein, Dracula, and the Wolfman together. So obviously yeah, Lon yeah. Chaney couldn't <laughs> do it. Boris Karloff was too old. Bela Lugosi refused to do it. He was hooked on drugs by that point. So they brought in John Carradine to play Dracula, really? which wow. they didn't do much with him. And he was, it was really a waste because John Carradine's a fine actor and they really wasted his talents as for him to play Dracula. Yeah. Uh, but, but, he, but he played it in three movies, House of Frankenstein, Ghost of Frankenstein, House of Dracula. Yeah. And, you, and you end up with, uh, with John Carradine as Dracula. Yeah. Of course, the other, Definitive Dracula would be Christopher Lee of the 1950s. Christopher Lee was very, very good in those Hammer horror films. Yes, yes. Yeah, Manny, very... correct me if I'm wrong, but this was also the era uh, where there was a lot of tongue-in-cheek horror movies. You mentioned uh, sure. Hammer. I, I think of uh, uh, Michael J. Fox as uh, Teen Werewolf meets well, so-and-so, you know. Yeah, well, actually, there was That's Teen Werewolf. Wrong. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That was he was yeah. Oh, that that was late. That was much much later. That was tw thirty years later. No, when when, when 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 Bela Lugosi was uh, uh, in his prime, if you will, uh, that was the world of black and whites. It was early uh, film, early talkies, really. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so it was a scare factor, but they couldn't go that far with it. And by that time, other things like Frankenstein and other horror movies. Uh, uh, sort of took center stage. Maybe that. And, and, maybe that was quite it. Frankly, in, in the fifties movies, you could show off blood much easier because they were they were made in color. Right, right. Right. So it was easier to show off blood, and that was you know that was kind of important in a Dracula movie when he wants to put the bite on you. So I mean that's kind of important. Mm -hmm. And then and then of course came the nineteen sixties Dark Shadows, which is not a Dracula, but boy, Jonathan Frid for my money was one of the best vampires i mean a, yeah. a man you felt sorry for as barnabas collins that was kind of cool but as you mentioned uh, john there were a bunch of campy films about dracula and they were played by very famous actors leslie nielsen played a uh, dracula dracula uh, yeah dead and loving mm -hmm. it i think it was or, or how about uh, george hamilton was a dracula that's i mean a campy actor that's a cat <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, yeah, he's, yeah, okay, we'll go with that. He's a little campy. <laughs> but Leslie Nielsen can be very campy as well. Sure. So, I mean, these were all serviceable Draculas. Gary Oldman was a very good Dracula for the modern era. I think Christopher Lee in the mid-modern era was a very good Dracula. But when people think of Dracula, don't they think of Bela Lugosi? Oh, absolutely. He, he's got, he, whatever it is, he nailed it. 
or and he got stuck with it and and nobody else can probably ever break it down and he it had is. that hung, his that hungarian accent of his was really good i mean yeah. really good and he was a you know you take the makeup off of him he was a very good looking man i mean he could have played leading parts for years and it just never happened because as you said he got caught you know playing and, and stereotyped yeah. as, as a vampire so that was that well, I think Bella Lugosi brought a, a a dignity and an authority to Count Dracula, and I still remember a great quote from that movie: "The children of the night, what the beautiful music they make." <laughs> and then, of course, a wolf man howls in the background. Yeah, and, and of course you have Renfield eating flies because he's bitten by the by by yeah. Dracula as well. <laughs> that was a great imitation, by the way, John. That Thank was just worth, that's worth the price of admission right there alone. So right. as, I, a matter, I, as a matter of fact, because of that, John, the next time the three of us get together, which we do from time to time, we ought to go out and have a drink. And I suggest that uh, we have some bloody mirrors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, it's a good thing we're filming this during the day, or I'd really worry about John. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank That's you, gentlemen. <laughs> All right, Manny, I think you've settled it. Bella Lugosi is the best Dracula. Thank you. Not that George Hamilton doesn't deserve a, a recognition, but... <laughs> <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.